So, welcome back. My name is Marco Luc from Water Dragon Arts. I'm really happy that you've made it today, that you decided to take this course. Thanks for watching this video. I want to talk about Qigong basics, first of all, and then I want to teach you a little Daoyin exercise, which is put together in combination with the Zhan Zhuang pose, the hugging the tree posture, Qigong standing pole exercises. I come across people all the time that don't really know exactly how to stand in Zhan Zhuang. And it's really important to do all these little adjustments and know how to align the body correctly to make this exercise very effective. And in order to prevent you from wasting your time, I want to convey all this knowledge to you and I hope in the end of this course you will be able to practice it by yourself. Now obviously this is a completely free course, you don't have to sign up to anything, but if you want to stay tuned you can sign up in the form somewhere below and you can also click through some links here, you will see my courses, you can visit my website, I do have a large blog, different Qigong and Taiji Chuan related articles are in there. And there is obviously one more thing. This course is supposed to serve as a bit of an example lesson. Okay, so my courses are uh, structured in a very specific way. And you can see by doing this course what my other courses might look like. So you have a bit of an idea what my teaching style is like. In my courses and also here, I will always have one or two videos about a spe specific subject. And then you will either have a button or like in this case, you will have an entire article attached or below the video. And this article or research paper or whatever it is will serve you to dive deeper into the subject. So you will learn more about Zhan Zhuang Gong in this case, okay? So you will have a little bit about the history there, where it actually came from. Then you will have some um, parts that talk about where these standing pole exercises are mainly used, what they're doing, what happens in the body and all these kind of things. So you can really get a lot of information from them. As an example, my Yi Jin Jing Qigong course, which you will find on my website, has 60 video lessons. So it's 60 lessons that are structured the same as this course. Over 17 hours of content and many different research papers, articles or publications. So I think I've said enough. I would like to begin our practice. I hope you brought some time with you. Maybe you have, I say maybe half an hour. If you can make a half an hour free right now, this would be great. Maybe you wear comfortable clothes already and we can get started right away. So I'm not going to talk for the next 20 minutes about Zhan Zhuang and tell you what exactly it is. You can find a lot of the information in the article below. But for those of you who are very new to Qigong, I want to at least briefly give you an overview of Zhan Zhuang Gong. You might have heard of it before, you might have seen it somewhere, you might have practiced it already or you might have wondered uh, what this is all about when you see people standing and not moving at all, okay? It is this position. It's commonly known as Zhan Zhuang. This is just a general word, standing pole exercises. But when you hear Zhan Zhuang, most people will associate this particular pose with it. And that's why we're also going to do this one today. This is a very effective practice. There are lots of different things happening inside the body. From the outside, it might look like there is nothing happening and someone is just standing still. But in the inside, on the inside, there is lots of movement, okay? And we are really absorbing our mind into the entire structure of the body and trying to find a very specific state. We always try to relax the big muscles down while we keep our bone structure elevated. And that's already one really important key to practice this exercise correctly, okay? We always want to relax the muscles down while we keep the bone structure elevated. I will talk about that more in detail once we actually get started. Whether you practice Qigong for health reasons, so to improve your general state of health, 
or because you want to improve your martial arts, for example, your Tai Chi Chuan practice. Jan Zhuang is really a cornerstone practice. It's really important for both. If we just take a look at the health aspect for now, as we're standing, as we're aligning our body, we will be able to relax deeply into the body, okay? With the mind absorbed deep inside the body, we will be able to release chronic tension also because we actively relax the muscles down and we create a stretch in, for example, connective tissues and fascia, right? So the tissues will open a little bit. We allow them to open and we create space. Through this deep relaxation, Qi will be able to reach other regions, deeper regions of the body and bring things back into balance. What does this mean? Well, for example, imagine you're having a organ deficiency. I hope you will not have that, but you know, just a deficiency is uh, not very rare, it happens sometimes. It can be the result of a lifestyle or some bad food or whatever. She acts a little bit like water in two buckets, okay? Imagine you have two buckets. The one bucket is full with water and the other one has only a little bit of water, but those two buckets are connected with a hose. What will happen is the water will slowly fill up the bottom through the bottom of the other bucket until the water level is evened out, brought back into balance. That's a metaphor for our chi. So if we're able through deep relaxation to bring chi or allow chi to reach deeper layers of the body, it will flow to the place of lower potential and bring back this balance. Basically through relaxing deeply and assuming those this position, while all the, the other principles are applied, we're creating an environment for the natural healing ability, the inherited natural healing intelligence in our body to do its job, okay? To bring that, to bring back health, to bring everything back into balance. But there are other reasons why Jandrong is really great for health. For example, we are creating the sinew channels of the body. You can imagine um, that the sinew channels are like highways for your chi. But they are also part of the interconnected body, right? So the body consists of a network from connective tissues and fascia. Everything is connected. If there, at the bottom of my feet is something like a pinch, there will be an effect somewhere else in the body because this web is everywhere. Now through strengthening this web and developing those connections, we will automatically allow Qi to flow more efficiently in different regions of the body. So in this case, you will create a strong network between your upper body and your lower body. And this will be very helpful to maintain and increase your health. But if you think about this network of tissues in the body, then you can also understand why it's really powerful, really important for internal martial arts. For example, if you want to express power from the bottom of the feet up towards the hands or wherever you want to express it, you need to have a really well and really good interconnected body, right? In order to transfer the power efficiently. So you can see there are different aspects to Jandrong and there's so much more to, to, to learn about and to tell about uh, but we won't be able to cover everything in this little course today. But as I said, below this course, you will also find a lot of extra information, lots of details, a bit about the history and the inner workings of this posture as well. Okay, it's really interesting and I recommend reading through the article later. So when there are so many aspects to consider, or so many purposes and reasons why we should practice Jandwang, then you can already uh, understand, you probably realize or already that the practice itself can vary a little bit depending on the Qigong system that the person is practicing or depending on what their personal goals are, okay? Jandwang can look a little bit differently. Well, most of the time the 
outside appearance will probably be the same, but there are different ways to practice it still. There can be the focus a bit different, the methods can be a little bit different. And there's lots of judgment, especially on Facebook or in other Taiji or Qigong forums. And people seem to always know other people's Qigong systems better. <laughs> in fact, most of the time, a lot of the people don't even know their own Qigong system on a deep level, which is kind of ridiculous if you ask me. But you have to make sure that you understand that there are always little differences. Okay, so if someone, for example, uses the Dantian to focus on when they inhale the air while they're standing in Zhan Wang and exhale Qi into the feet, then this is, for example, a method that is being used to learn how to sink the Qi better. Or if someone, for some reason, includes uh, Dantian exercises, obviously their mind and their breath will be based in the Dantian as well, right? So it really changes. Someone that practices for a specific uh, health reason with a specific Qigong system will do it a bit differently from the person that is practicing Zhang Zhuang to improve their Yichuan in other internal martial arts, okay? What you have to know, and this is important for me that you realize that today, is that what I will show you is Zhang Zhuang, the general principles of it, which always stay the same, okay? I won't judge you, or I won't tell you, do it exactly like this, do it like that. If your Qigong system has maybe done it a little bit differently, that's okay for you. What I, will, what I want to show you today is how you can practice Zhang Zhuang, no matter what you do, regardless of the Qigong system that you're practicing. And if you realize that these Qigong principles are not applied in your exercise, then you know that you might have to change something, okay? What I will tell you is just really, yeah, the general principles, the outlines that should always be the same, okay? And that's why I think that this course is very powerful because it will give you a strong foundation for all standing pole exercises, okay? May it be just your Tai Chi training or Yi Jin Jing Qigong, different uh, systems. If you know how to apply these principles and stand correctly, that's already worth a lot. Okay, so let's get started. I don't want to keep talking. You get bored. I want you to come into a stance with the feet shoulder wide apart. I'm going to cue you the basic Qigong stance starting from the bottom and then moving to the crown of the head. And once we have done that once, I will cue from the crown of the head back to the bottom. <laughs> And that is because of a very specific reason. First, and this is important for those of you who have never done Zhang Zhuang before, I want to manually place the body in the position, or at least close to the position that we want to get. And then when we work our way from the crown of the head down to the bottom, we will apply more and more principles step by step. Okay, so with the sh feet shoulder wide apart, I just want you to close your eyes and breathe completely naturally. Just take a minute to give yourself permission to focus completely on yourself. Forget about all the worries or other tasks that you still have to do. Relax, relax all the big muscles down as good as you can already. Just really roughly scan from top to bottom and dissolve all the, the big tension that you can locate really quickly. And then begin to breathe really deeply, okay? Just breathe into the belly, expand the chest, fill the lungs up all the way. And then exhale again. Through the nose or through the mouth.
deep breathing is just a, such a simple way to relax yourself already. And then come back to your normal breath. Let the arms hang down completely, naturally. If they're here, that's fine. If they're here, that's fine. Your knees are still locked out. That's okay. So make sure that your feet are parallel to each other. Toes are facing perfectly forward. Okay, I don't want to see something like this. And then start shifting your weight forward and backward. A little bit of a left and right movement. And just place your attention on the bottom of your feet. And just see if you can feel how the pressure changes depending on how you distribute your weight. What happens quite often, and this is due to tension in the hips and also in the lower spine, but also maybe because of a lack of awareness, but lots of people, they start to lean back too much. Too much weight is on the heels. Okay, we try to avoid that. So that's why we first start to shift our weight as much forward as we need to, so that we feel that the weight is on the ball of the foot. So we basically want to be in that first third of the front foot. This point here is called the Yong Chuan point. If you know the point, then you can bring the weight to this area of the foot. And maybe you feel how the muscles between the bones in your feet spread out a little bit. If you have that sensation, that's a good sign, okay? And that's the place that you want to maintain your weight on, okay? So I relax the knees. Move your attention further up towards the hip joints. This area here is called the quad. I will talk about that a little bit more in detail once we go from the top to the bottom, okay? I want you to align your legs in a specific way so that the hip joints and the, the ankles and the knees are in one line. Okay, don't push the knees out to the side. Don't let the knees fall inward. Sometimes that can happen when people have flat feet, for example. So just see where your knees are. And if you need to, align them so that it's a nice and straight line from the ankles up to the hip joints. And this will allow you to Drop the mass of the body straight through the legs into the ground. This is really important to lower the center of gravity and sink your chi. So next I want you to relax the pelvis. Okay. And now just for you to understand the position a little bit, I'll show you what you can do. So I don't want you, I have to be careful because of my microphone here. I have to be care, uh, careful not to push my butt out too much. <laughs> I don't want you to do this, but instead I want you to tuck the pelvis in, kind of like this, okay? A little bit of a pelvis tuck, not like this, but like this. And this will help you to understand a little bit what position you're body will naturally go in later, okay? 
in my opinion, it's very helpful to align the body in this manual way in the very beginning, just to condition it a little bit, get used to the position. And then in a few days or weeks, you will get rid of that manual active positioning and the lining, and you will just relax the pelvis down naturally and let it hang down, let it become really heavy. And then it should automatically slide into place, okay? So if you relax the pelvis down, you will notice that your knees bend a little bit. Okay, so you cannot really tilt that pelvis like this or relax the pelvis down correctly if you don't bend your knees. The bending of the knees will allow the pelvis to just be received by the legs. Okay, and then you are able to let it become heavy and just relax down. Now at this point, I want you to check your feet one more time and make sure that you're still in the same spot. If you have leaned back a little bit, then just move a bit forward again. Make sure you distribute the weight on your yong train point. Relax your lower abdomen, the back, let the shoulder blades get really heavy, and relax down, shoulders nicely down. And then we concentrate on the crown of the head and we raise it up slightly as if a string was attached right here that pulls it up lightly and this will result in the chin being tucked in a little bit okay it's like you're pivoting on the temple and you probably feel that you have a bit of a stretch in the back of your neck Now you can already place the tip of your tongue to the roof of the mouth. In the beginning that's not very important, but later on it will be. This is connecting the yin and the yang vessel in your body. And this will give you already a rough idea now how to align the body. But now we will add more cues and more principles. First of all, come in your normal position. The first thing we do now is we raise the crown of the head up. Focus on the back of the neck. You will probably feel a light stretch there. You will probably feel how this area of your throat will relax. Now I want you to remain in this position. Your head stays exactly where it is. And now you bring your shoulders down, okay? Shoulders and collarbone. But your head stays where it is, okay? Your shoulders get heavy, collarbone gets heavy. Now imagine your collarbone, upper part of the shoulders, and your head are like a clothes hanger. You know, with a little bit of fantasy, imagination, you can really see the shape, right? This is here, the hook here. Shoulders is where you put your clothes on. And this clothes hanger is now, when you raise the crown of the head up, put over top of the bar, you know, that where you put your clothing on. And the rest of your body is like the piece of clothing that you put on this hanger. Imagine it is wet. That's even easier to imagine then. Imagine the rest of your body, at least up to here, will be like a wet piece of clothing, like a wet wool sweater that's really soaked up with lots of moisture. So you relax everything below this cloth hanger structure downward without losing this position, okay? Your cloth hanger is still over, on, over top of this bar. 
So you relax the pelvis down, the head stays where it is. Just relax. You will see that you will have to bend your knees a little bit. Okay, stay here and we move back to the collarbone. Now we focus on the chest. We take a few extra minutes just to empty out the chest. Okay, and what that means is that we want to locate all the tension that we have in the chest and release it. The head stays where it is. Relax the chest and then go back down to the pelvis and relax the pelvis down a little bit more. Head stays where it is. Let the pelvis become heavy. And at some point you will notice that you have a slight stretch in the spine, okay? Because your pelvis is pulling on it at the bottom because of gravity. The pelvis gets heavy, but the crown of the head is pulling up. Okay, now you go back up, but this time to the shoulder blades. Relax the shoulder blades down, let them Melt down the back, become heavy. Make sure the chest stays relaxed. All the muscles between the ribs relax. But the head stays where it is. And then concentrate back on your feet, okay? Make sure that you're still on your Yongchuan point and not too far back on the heels. And then relax the pelvis down even further, but remember the head stays where it is. You might be able to feel a slight stretch in this area. Your waist might feel a little bit under tension, but good tension. Relax all the big muscles down. Constantly go back to the pelvis and relax it down even more. But maintain the bone structure. The bones are floating and elevated. The crown of the head pulls up gently. The knees are relaxed. Maybe you're able to feel the mass of your body traveling down into your feet. In the beginning, you can even use your breath as an aid to relax yourself. You can breathe into different regions of the body where you feel a lot of tension, for example, and then release the area down. Okay, you can take yourself two, three, four, five minutes in the beginning of your practice, and you can just use your breath to Open up the tissues a little bit. Breathe into the area of tension. And then relax them down. Now you can see there are two opposing forces. The crown of the head up and the tailbone down. The pelvis that drops down. Create a stretch in the spine. You create space between each vertebrae. 
your spine is aligned, the vertebrae are aligned more or less on top of each other, the lumbar curve is flattened out a little bit, which is, for example, really important for power development. But also in order to align the body correctly so that you will be able to relax deeper. At the same time, the neck curvature is flattened out a little bit. But that's not the goal. You don't want to have a super straight spine, but you want to create space. Okay, you want to create space between the vertebrae and get rid of all the chronic tension that's preventing the energy from flowing freely. And even though you're relaxing your pelvis downward, and even though you're relaxing all the other big muscles in your body, you will eventually feel that you will stretch and stress other parts of the body. Okay? What will happen if you relax the muscles? You will take them out of the equation. You won't use the muscles anymore. But then, because your pelvis is becoming heavy and dropping down while your bone structure, the crown of the head, is pulling up, you will stretch connective tissues and other fascia in the body. And this is exactly the effect that we try to achieve because we don't want to work our muscles, right? Qigong Tai Chi is not a muscle workout. We can go to the gym for that. We want to target the fascia and connective tissues, that network of fascia in the body. But the, we don't want to target it very actively with a strong intention. We don't want to do the practice and say, okay, now I'm going to, to stretch this fascia. We just want to create the environment and we want to put our body in this position so that qi can cause a transformation. You can go through all of these cues step by step. You can always focus on the crown of the head. You can even Go back up and move that checklist from the top to the bottom. Keep the head where it is. Relax the pelvis. And position your body. You will notice that, for example, when you tighten your butt cheeks, <laughs> you will notice that you have too much tension in the hips and your pelvis cannot relax properly. So as you're scanning the body from the top to the bottom, from the bottom to the top, you will always encounter other areas of tension in the body, especially in the beginning, especially if you're new to the standing posture. We haven't even used our arms yet, but your goal should be in the beginning to breathe into these areas, place your awareness onto these areas, and relax them down again. You find tension, you relax it. But all of that while you're maintaining that elevated bone structure. Okay? Your joints are open. Crown of the head pulls up gently. Now I notice that I'm clamping my butt cheeks, I relax them, and I notice that my pelvis immediately is able to drop down a little bit more. Okay, so you just scan the top to the bottom and for the first few weeks maybe even months you just concentrate on relaxing but always make sure you maintain this elevated structure and don't collapse your bones don't collapse your spine if you go too far on the heels you will notice that it becomes really difficult and your front thigh for example will get really tense because when you're too far back, you need to use a lot more of these muscles to stay upright. And then you know, oh, okay, I need to shift forward a little bit, distribute my weight a bit better, and then sink the chi, relax all the muscles down. If you're tensing your legs too much, again, your pelvis cannot be
be received by the legs. You want to relax as good as you can and maybe you'll be able to feel that the mass will just travel through the legs down into your feet, down to the ground. Always relax the chest and the shoulder blades. You can practice this for five to 10 minutes every day, even longer. There is no upper limit, I would say. Just to repeat really quickly some of the alignment cues. Feet shoulder wide apart, toes facing forward, feet parallel, okay? If they're a little bit wider than shoulder wide, that's still okay. I'm just gonna stay so that you can see it from that perspective. You relax the knees, but you don't have to even start there. You can start at the top too. But they bend because of the sinking, okay? They bend because you start sitting into the core and relaxing the pelvis down. Okay, here, my pelvis is relaxing down and it's only being received by my legs because I can relax this area. If you look at your knees, Make sure they don't go past your toes, okay? What happens is if you stand like this, often that happens because someone wants to lean back too, too much. Then just come up a bit and bend from the quad, okay? So not here, but instead bend a little bit here. And then again, check your feet, see if the position is in the correct place. Pelvis relaxed, abdomen relaxed, chest relaxed, shoulder blades down, crown of the head up. Butt cheeks relaxed. And then you always scan from the top to the bottom. This is your cloth hanger. You put the cloth hanger over the bar and you drop the rest of the body down without moving the head. The head obviously at some point will move, but only after you've created a sufficient stretch in the spine. And then you sit into the core. Okay, and when you sit into the core, then you sit into this area of your hips here. Okay, you sit into the core. The difference of sitting into the core from sitting or squatting, well, in this case, more squatting, is that when you sit here, it's as if you would sit down on a high chair or something like that. Just, it's kind of like a psychology trick as well, because when you're sitting down, you're already expecting there to be a chair, and that's why you don't use so many muscles in your legs. Whereas if you're squatting, you're using the max, uh, the, the max, the legs really hardcore, right? So if you sit into the core, think about sitting down and you will be able to sit into the core and stay relaxed, not using too many of the muscles. Again, check back knees. Yep, the knees are behind my toes. Then check back in with the weight on my feet and so on, okay? This is the basic stance. We will work from here. You can try this, obviously, at home. You've probably done it with me right now. Just try that a few times and just try to get the feeling for it. Build the awareness of your body. That's not very easy in the beginning. It's important that we absorb the mind into the entire structure of the body. So you will have to be able to see Okay, where is the tension? How does my chest feel? How tense is my back? How can I relax the shoulder blades down? How does it feel? What happens if I do this? How can I separate my pelvis from the rest of the upper body? How can I just let it become heavy and hang down freely? How can I align the legs properly? So you have to build this awareness step by step. 
so that you're able to stand in this basic Qigong stance comfortably. But that being said, it's not always going to be comfortable because the better you will get at releasing your pelvis downward, the more you will stretch other parts of the body. Okay, not because you're getting too tense, but because of the relaxed muscles that will result in a stretch in your connective tissues and fascia. So I hope that you um, will practice a little bit at home. In the next video, if you're ready already, I will show you how to move from your Qigong basic stance into the next position, small Daoyin exercise, and then Jan Zhuang. I hope this was very helpful, and of course, I hope I see you in the next lesson.